So we're sitting here with Tidy right after his set in Nocturnal Wonderland. Tell us a little bit about your set right now. It was so much fun. Um, I didn't know what to expect because I was playing quite early in the day today actually. I played the 4 to 5 p.m. set. But the crowd came in early and the people there were, the energy was insane. Like there was this one guy who had, he had my logo and he somehow painted it on his hands like this. And this other guy was holding up song names on shirts and things. So like there were really true fans there today. And uh, it's really hot. It was like, yeah, it was just great. It was, you know, the crowd, the crowd was going crazy. And uh, I only had an hour to play, but um, I, I squeezed in everything that I really wanted to play for them. And um, yeah, I don't know what to say. At the end of the set, I ended up jumping into the crowd and meeting a lot of new people, and it was it was fantastic. Anything new you wanted to test out for the crowd here at your first uh, Insomniac Festival? Uh, today, I did what I shouldn't have done and tested off a track, a new track. A friend of mine, Curly, she's a really, really good singer and songwriter from LA and she has a song called Lucky Ones that is going to blow up in my opinion and I did a remix for her and I was not meant to play it today so I'm sorry to everybody and I'm sorry Curly but I did play it and they loved it so I don't care and it went really well it was, it was a great vibe it was so much fun so that, that was that was my tester I also played a track called Jelly which I never really officially released it's not on any record label it's, a, it's one that I gave away to all the fans just for a bit of fun, and uh, I, was, I wasn't planning to play that one, but this guy was holding it out like in big writing, so I had to drop it. You had a uh, great success in the Sony In The Mix competitions, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, back, um, I used to play, I'm 25 now, back when I was uh, around 20, I was playing mostly in Australia, and every weekend I was playing every, every major city in Australia, and I was super lucky because I built a really good following there and I was voted the number one DJ in Australia for for two years in a row and uh, that was a huge boost for me in my own country and what's even more exciting now is that uh, since then I've been able to take things overseas and now I'm playing everywhere from you know Russia to India, Ukraine, the UK, I'm here in America right now, I played last night in Canada, next weekend I'm playing in Israel, I'm playing in Prague so it's just, it's insane. And um, yeah, I really, I think I, I think I have a lot of my Australian fans to thank for that because, you know, you have to start somewhere. And I started with playing to 20 people in a venue, I remember, where people had no idea who I was. And now I get to play to 45,000 people sometimes to, to fans who know and sing along the words to my songs. So it's, uh, it's just, it's surreal. It's the, it's the best life. I love it. I heard you write music for other stuff other than dance music. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I was really lucky to write the soundtrack for an entire Australian government campaign. And uh, it was shown in, on the TV and movie theatres. I've also got music and video games. And um, now I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to try and get my music into film because one of my lifelong dreams besides DJing has been writing film scores. I'm a big fan of guys like Hans Zimmer and um, you know, I could name millions here but it's just the thing for me when you watch a movie like think of, think of any movie you love like the most epic movie or like it could be indie it could be it could be Avatar or it could be Lost in Translation how much less emotion that movie has without the soundtrack and I want to be the guy that makes that, that brings what you see on camera to the heart of the people that watch it. So that's something I'm really going to work on now. And I'm starting to do that with my album. So like with my last album, Shooting Stars, I had an interlude on there. I had a track called Ariana. Um, I had a song called, um, I wrote a track called Meet Me in Kyoto. That wasn't on that album. But um, yeah, I've written a whole bunch of stuff that isn't dance music. It's just straight up ambient electronica. And that's kind of my attempt at showing my fans that I'm, I'm really excited about stuff that isn't just for the clubs and I'd really 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 like to try and get music into film now that would be that would be insane for me. Any new project or remixes coming soon that we can expect from you? Yeah uh, a lot of my fans have been uh, asking me when I'm going to do something new because my last album was in August it was called Shooting Stars and um, 
since then I've just been doing remixes. I did a remix for Aunt Dane and a whole bunch of different things, but there's been no new originals, and that is because I've been stockpiling them up, and I have about 15 new tracks that I'm I'm sitting on like a mother hen, and uh, these are these are my favourites. I'm like so excited about these songs. I think we're going to be releasing Glow in the Dark. It's a song I wrote with a girl named Curly. She's from LA, and she's incredible. I might have mentioned her earlier in this interview. Okay, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, lots of new music coming out. There's going to be Glow in the Dark. There's an acoustic version. I have a song with Christina Novelli, who sang for Gareth Emery's track uh, Concrete Angel. And that's called Fire and Load. There's a song with Dashboard Confessional, which is one of my favourite bands. Well, he's a singer and songwriter who also performs in a band, and uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, so there's plenty of new music coming. Not sure yet if it's going to be an album or if it's going to be single releases, but lots of new music from me very soon. Hey, I'm Tidy, and thank you for tuning into Raw Beats.